Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful autumn scene, a misty autumn wood, woodland, um, using these three bamboo flat harky brushes that I found on AliExpress. I'm going to be using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's 140 pounds or 300 grams weight and it's taped to my board um, with ordinary decorator's masking tape. My board's set at an angle of about 45 degrees so I get a nice amount of, of run um, and gravity will help me with my smooth washes. I'm going to wet the page all over using the largest of these three brushes. My paper is not pre-stretched, I just tape it to my board. It swells and buckles a bit as I paint, but it's held in place with the tape. So as it dries, it stretch, it contracts again um, and flattens. This is raw sienna. I'm just putting in light swipes, upward swipes mostly, and then across the, the, the forest floor, um, with the raw sienna, leaving plenty of gaps between to allow for the paint to diffuse and to get in some, some darker glow from this Venetian red. If you don't have Venetian red, you can use light red. Um, that's just as nice. It's, it's that same sort of strong colour, but be careful not to put too much on because it can really overwhelm a painting if you use too much of it. So what I'm doing is I'm getting a little bit of it on there and then using the brush and the water that's on the page to sort of feather it through and just draw a bit more of the light red across. I'm looking for a really misty background but with a good glow of light um, in the background. So then my dark um, f autumnal forest trees in the foreground should show up really nicely against that sort of sunny background glow. And now I'm going to introduce my last colour and that's Payne's Grey um, across the forest floor just to start building up some darks and shadows in the foreground. So this is another of my limited palette paintings. To be honest, most of them are. I prefer to um, play around when I'm painting just with a few colours. I think it gives me much more colour harmony in my painting. Um, and it's much easier because you've got less to think about if you've only got two or three colours to, to think about using. And now that this wet in wet background is more or less established, I'm going to finish it off by um, using my rigger brush and fairly sort of um, medium to weak mixture of Payne's Grey and the other colours, um, that's um, Venetian Red and Raw Sienna. Um, I'm going to just pull up through the wet paint, the wet wash, um, pale thin lines for distant trees. Some of those will all but disappear and others of them will just look very sort of faint and diffused in the background. I'm pulling across some branches as well and those are kind of going to be my mid-ground branches. I'm working fairly quickly because I don't want my paper to dry out, my background wash, because I want these lines for the branches and the trees to diffuse and be quite sort of misty looking. So I'm not worrying about putting too much detail in at the moment. I'm trying to build up a sort of background. But most importantly, I'm keeping that central area light. And I hope you can see how soft all these lines are. Um, even some of the stronger, darker marks are softly diffusing out and giving me just these nice soft edges. Once I get some detailed trees um, 
in the next layer of painting, once everything's dry, these should be just pushed back. These marks here will, will be pushed well back into the background. Now this is the corner of a plastic store card. I'm dragging it through to create some texture in the foreground. Um, just dragging it, the corner of it up to create some little um, grasses and sticks and maybe um, just sort of undulations in the ground, that sort of thing. And now that my background's almost completely dry, I'm going to carefully use a slightly drier and richer mixture of raw sienna to start with and just the corner of this brush um, to get in some autumnal leaves and foliage here and there. I'm going to build these up just very slowly. I don't want an all over covering. I want this to look as if some of the leaves have fallen um, onto the ground, onto the forest floor. So I'm picking up a little bit of the light red and a bit later I'll pick up a little bit of the Payne's grey and that'll give me some variation in the leaves. Some of these will soften because the paper is still a little bit damp but I'm hoping that these slightly stronger marks will give me the basis, um, well, will actually be the finished, more or less the finished leaves um, of the forest. I want to keep them quite delicate. I'm trying to get a bit more of this raw sienna into the foreground as well. I'm stepping back every now and again and looking at my painting and deciding where I just need these little groups of leaves. Now that was a bit dark, um, that light red, yep, still a bit dark. I'm gonna soften that in. I do want some of those red accents in the leaves, but not too much. So I'm just delicately touching the corner of my brush to the, pa to the paper to get this effect. If you've got a stippling brush, you can probably get some, something similar. I'm taking my time building up the tone in these groups of leaves as well. Um, I'm making sure that I don't use um, very wet paint. If I used wet paint here, um, I wouldn't get the delicate marks from the corner of the brush that I'm getting, but I'd also run the risk of runbacks with wet paint going into the almost dry background. I'm very happy with that for my first wash or my underpainting. Now I'm going to leave it to dry completely and then come back and add some darks and some detail. I've allowed it to dry naturally in the air and I think it looks really nice. It's how I wanted it to look. So now I'm going to put in some detailed trees using Payne's Grey and my rigger brush. I'm going to try and leave the leaves, leave gaps for the leaves to show across my trunks if you see what I mean. So I'm trying to follow the lead of where I place those little leaves little bunches of leaves and I'm going to try to lead my branches towards them and as I say leave gaps so that it looks like there are some leaves in front of the trees in places. There's no rush with this process now because I'm using wet paint on a dry painting so I can take my time, think about where I want my branches and try and keep them quite dainty and delicate. And while I'm being guided by the lines that I painted in that diffused 
in the earlier wash. I'm trying not to cover them all over. I want some of them to show so it looks like mid-ground trees and distant trees going back into the misty distance. I can use a tissue to soften back some of those branches if they're looking a little bit dark. I'm trying to make sure that both sides of my painting that the trees don't don't look too similar because I want these to look like wild trees rather than sort of manicured garden or park trees. And of course, if you try this painting, you can do as many or as few branches as you like, or as many trees as you like. Um, you could put in extra features. Um, you could have birds in the distance, um, maybe some people um, walking sort of on the far lakeside, something like that. But I'm going to keep this nice and plain, nice and simple. It's my first autumn painting for a while. I'm really enjoying it. Autumn is my favourite time of the year as well. I think that's nearly enough branches. And now I'm going to go back to one of my Harky brushes. Um, this is the small one this time from the set of three. And with raw sienna, with a, just a touch of light red in it, I'm going to just add a bit more strength here and there to some of my little groups and canopies of leaves. I don't want to overdo it, but I just want to make sure that there's enough balance in the painting. And now I've got my, um, my, tr my proper foreground trees in, I can just see where I need a few more little leaves dotted and dabbed in, maybe something and nothing across the foreground and on the tree line, on the ground, that sort of thing. And now finally taking the larger Harky brush and using some nice dark Payne's Grey just to carefully get in a bit more shadow, a bit more texture. And I'm going to darken up the bottom corners of the forest floor of the painting just to really bring the painting together. That's better. A bit more across the other side as well. And I think that will do. I shall call that one finished now, I think, and remove the tape and have a little look and check, make sure it looks okay. It's a little bit darker and brighter than it looks here in real life as it's a sunny day and the sun's streaming in through the windows of my studio and it's slightly overexposed, but that can't be helped. I'll put up a photograph at the end that shows the colours as they look, uh, look in, um, in real life. Well, I'm very pleased with this because sometimes when I paint these sort of forest scenes, I find that I can tend to sort of overdo the foliage a little bit or put in too many tree branches, but I quite like how elegant this wood looks. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. 
And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. Now here's the photograph that shows the colours, how they look in real life. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.